hey guys it's rose k again welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here consider subscribing if you're old boy, please share share this video on your social media platform maybe it may help someone out there i uh, recently posted my previous video of empowering the next generation of female scientists and engineers and i got a lot of comments from you guys and i'm here to answer some of your questions Let's get started. And by the way, I'm only going to answer questions related to the video. The ones which are not related, maybe I'll make another video. So keep those comments coming in. And if you've not watched my previous video, I'm going to leave the link in the comment section. Please check it out and tell me what you think. The first question was, why you men? Why advocate for women? Come on. I'm a woman. That's, that's obvious. And you know, we are underrepresented in the STEM field globally, even including Uganda. We are facing these real world challenges. Talk about climate changes, I can attach it to the recent Lake Victoria flooding and the, 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 the Sinjur drought. Um, health, which is the most pressing issue right now because of the pandemic. Talk about all those stuff. STEM field is at the forefront of creating tools and innovative ideas to solve these problems. And at that moment, we need our best thinkers, and that must include women. So at every stage of solving these problems, we need women to be involved. You know, when different ideas come in, different expertise, and trust me, no stone will be left unturned. Another question is, what drove into engineering and share your life experience in here? We joined at campus. Okay. I may say my dad was a Nali technician who did uh, quite a number of projects that on structures and carpentry as a full time job. So, and somehow, somewhere, influenced my, my siblings. So, to follow his footsteps. So, as a teenager growing up, I loved physics and math. Yes, I talked of math, I loved mathematics. When I was seeking career guidance at my A level, I talked to a few people who guided me. They encouraged me to at least take a career in STEM field. So I had to zero it down to civil engineering because it's the one which I was first exposed to and there you go. But uh, there was this question we left out is share your life experience when you first joined university. I'm not going to lie to you, my first time at campus was, I was nervous and at the same time excited. Why? Because I was seeing my dreams coming true. So when I entered the gates of engineering school, I was overwhelmed by the number of male students for the program. And as a girl who was coming from a single sex school, I really felt I need to make myself comfortable for this program because I wasn't used to that environment. So I self-assured myself that this is where I belong, this is my fate, and this is where my potential has carried me to. So I, I found ways how to make myself comfortable for the program and, and promise myself that I'm going to to help more, more, more female to also feel comfortable until we achieve our mission. So that power attitude kept me going until we graduated. Advice a student interested in science and engineering. Okay. A student out there confused on what to do, what I can tell you is to first research about the STEM field. Because I strongly believe that the STEM has the best of all careers. Talk about design, talk about research, talk about engineering, talk about medicine, pharmacy, and space program. Uh, just imagine of space program. It's not going to the most exciting. Think about it. So when you have all this first-hand information, to help you to guide you to make the right choice, right 
try so the course you want to take um, and when you you are ready to go please don't hesitate never give it a, th a second thought so after knowing the course you are going to take find a good mentor along the journey because you need one and on top of that you must master the art of technical writing and presentation so that is the key uh, you must be curious, persistent, never be afraid to fail because it's okay not to know all the answers in the first place. So, and never be afraid to make mistakes because as long as you learn from them. And above it all, you need to be innovative, creative. If you have a good idea, implement it. It's easy to apologize than asking for permission. You thank me later. Another one is, what's the challenging part of being a female as you pursue your career in the male-dominated sector? Let me say, it's challenging and rewarding at the same time. It's tough because the way how employers see us as women, that we're incapable, even if without finding what we can offer to them, that's so disgusting. And um, it's rewarding. On the other hand, because we are able to, we are bold people, we are able to talk about anything. We can, right now, we are here exchanging ideas, empowering the next generation. So that's how it is running. It helps you to, to keep you in place. You have to upgrade your knowledge to beat up the competition because you need to, to advance every time you add an, something. Maybe you read a book, you read, maybe you add another course so that. You find different ways to solve problems. The most pressing thing is you have to work all day. I'm not going to lie about that. Look at our doctors and nurses, how they're handling the pandemic, how they're fighting every day, day and night to, to save lives of our loved ones. Guys, you are our heroes. And by the way, I will not forget to give a big shout out to our professor, Patrick, the man behind Copdex. I know he spent a lot of time looking for those formulas, combining this, combining that, to come up with the complex thing. Big ups to you, thanks for saving lives of Ugandans. Another question is, I'm a young woman looking forward for starting a career in STEM, especially being a mother. How do you address the perception that women in STEM don't own families? That's a good one. It was from Kate. Kate, what I can say is there is a lot of criticism and bad energy in our society when it comes to women in STEM and marriage. Sometimes I get those dating tips that Roske, when you are dating, never disclose a guy in the first place that you're in the STEM field. Why? Because he's going to perceive you as someone who's going to be a boss lady and who will not take time for the family. Really? Another one says, a woman of career gives less time to the family. And on the other hand, a woman who dedicates less time to science in order to balance her family life is considered less productive. Come on, guys. We need to think differently. We need to address this stigma involved in women in science and, and marriage. So we need to call upon those, the media, the society to address, to address that stigma so that we can empower our women, our future mothers and mothers with kids so that STEM is a friendly career to everyone. Another question came from Edward who says what do you think can be done to overcome barriers and increase number of females in STEM field. What I think is we need to collect the data and find those gender gender gaps. Just take an example if if Honorable Banja had the updated data of all Ugandans, do you think any vulnerable Ugandan would have missed on that company? Think about it. You know, data can pinpoint the specific gaps. For example, uh, there may be an overall good number of, of women in STEM, but a few in medicine, a few in research, a 
affine design, affine space problem. So if we have all that data in place, we can easily identify those gaps and try to, to do it differently. Another thing is we need to define how a great scientist or an engineer looks like. Uh, recently, there was a trending hashtag on Twitter saying, I look like an engineer. So it's my aim was to overcome that stereotype. Uh, because anyone can be an engineer, can be a scientist, whether dark skinned, whether light skinned, whether tall, whether short, whether feminine, whether masculine, anyone. So that is it. To redesign our education and profession system. Because at every stage of STEM journey, girls drop out, whether secondary, whether primary, whether university, whether workplace. And I'm going to break it down for you. At primary and secondary level, girls drop out, not because of the ability gap, but confidence gap. So it's my role, you and me, to, to address this because we need to create a, a, an environment where our girls see that they can have opportunities in the same career they can. And the, the government through its program should also advocate for that. Uh, at the university, what we need to do is to pair out gender audits, see how we are doing in producing gender mix STEM graduates, and this can make a difference. And at workplace, this is direct to employers. If there is any employer watching me right now, this is directed to you. Uh, we need to create a favorable environment for women with kids and those who are aspiring to be mothers. For example, I know for someone who was fired from work because she got pregnant. Because an employer saw it is going to go for those nine months pregnancy and then maternity leave and that will cause to cost him productivity. Guys, you need to see how to do things differently. Employers, give those child support incentives. It can, can attract most women. And um, another thing, encourage women to take those high-profile jobs. You create those, that environment where we can also participate in taking those high-profile jobs. So, at the end of the day, of the, we shall increase the number of women instead. Lastly, is we need to show case our women. You know, most times the media doesn't cover the those successful women. Their work remains invisible. So, what we need to do? Show the world the success of these great women. And so, with all that said, I'm not going to keep you here for long. But if you've not subscribed, please hit that bell. Let's keep safe because these moments are so, so hard. Let's keep safe. Let's observe SOPs. Let's mask up. Till next time. Bye bye.